Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthems of the Republic of Venezuela and the United States of America.
influence the owners, the staff, order, order. Welcome you to the United States, Mr. President. <clears throat> President Lucinci of Venezuela has been one of the finest of friends of our country. We have worked together in Central America to bring about the birth of democracy in many countries where that had not been known. And it's an honor today to welcome one of this hemisphere's shining examples of freedom and democracy, President Jaime Lucincio of Venezuela. President Lucincio is a man dedicated to those principles of liberty that are held dear by the people of the United States. It's a pleasure for us to have as our guest an individual who played such an important role building freedom in his own country and who now, as a spokesman for his people, is such a force for good in this hemisphere. Venezuelans do not take freedom for granted. It was just a generation ago when President Lucinci and other brave Venezuelans, under the leadership of a great statesman and Democrat, Romilo Betancourt, threw off dictatorship and began laying the foundation for a stable democratic society. Their struggle was not dissimilar to the one that's going on in Central America today. The fledgling Venezuelan democracy was immediately put to the test by Cuban-supported guerrillas and terrorists who would have turned Venezuela into a Marxist-Leninist dictatorship. Mr. President, your triumph in this 10-year struggle and the subsequent success of a freedom in your country should serve as a model for today, the Venezuelan model, if you will. Granting amnesty to those guerrillas willing to put down their weapons and participate in the electoral process, Venezuela's leaders held firm to the principles of democratic government and individual freedom and never gave in to the armed Marxist-Leninist minority. The peace, liberty, and seniority, or security, I should say, enjoyed in your country today is a result of that valor and determination. Nothing less should have been expected from the heirs of the great liberator, Simon Bolivar. He once said of Venezuela, by establishing a democratic republic, she has declared for the rights of man and freedom of action, thought, speech, and press. These eminently liberal acts will never cease to be admired. Venezuelans who understand that democracy is a path to peace and progress can be proud that their government is standing shoulder to shoulder with the forces of democracy in Central America today. All freedom-loving people should rejoice that El Salvador and other countries in the region like Venezuela before are maintaining or establishing democratic governments despite challenges of Soviet bloc-sponsored subversion. The exception to this trend in Central America is Nicaragua where a ruling clique of Sandinistas, allied with Cuban and Soviet dictators, have betrayed their citizens. Despite their assurances in 1979 to the people of Nicaragua and to the Organization of American States that they would hold genuinely democratic elections, they have, to the contrary, persecuted the democratic opposition parties, trade unions, and civic and religious organizations. Instead of free elections, they chose to hold a communist-style 
sham election orderly in form but without the participation of the democratic opposition because Sandinista-controlled gangs of thugs beat down freedom of speech and assembly, wiping out any chance for genuine political competition. President Lucinci, I hope you will work with me to ensure that the pledges of free elections and real democracy made to the OAS and to the Nicaraguan people are carried out. Venezuela has been and continues to be a leading force in the Contadora process, which seeks peace in Central America based on democratic principles, and we applaud your efforts. The United States places great importance on all 21 objectives of the Contadora process, which include truly democratic elections as originally promised by the Sandinistas. The Contadora objectives, if put into practice simultaneously with effective verification, offer the best hope for peace in Central America. I can assure you that the diplomatic efforts of the United States are designed to attain these objectives. Two decades ago, the founder of modern Venezuelan democracy, President Romulo Betancourt, visited here and said, if the United States and my country and Latin America can work together for democracy, we can increase and improve the conditions of life for all our people very rapidly. Well, his words rang true. In two decades, great things have been accomplished by the free people of Venezuela. The people of the United States are happy to have played a, a small role offering a helping hand to people who have become close friends. Venezuela, in turn, has assisted those working to better themselves in the Caribbean and Central America, making substantial contributions to the well-being of others through the San Jose Accord. Our relationship of trust and cooperation is good for our own peoples and benefits the entire hemisphere. It's something to be cherished, and we do not take it for granted. I'm sure, Mr. President, that you're also pleased by the restoration of democracy in Grenada. Yesterday's election marked the first time a Marxist-Leninist dictatorship has been succeeded by a government that receives its authority from free elections. And congratulations are due to the people of Grenada. Mr. President, we are keenly aware that Venezuela is now going through a period of economic adjustment. We support the responsible decisions that you are making to put your country back on the track to strong economic growth. We, too, have taken or undertaken some fundamental reforms in recent years, and more will be forthcoming. We continue to believe that strong economic growth is the foundation of social justice the key being greater incentives, opportunity, and freedom for every person. Each year, in every corner of the globe, evidence continues to build. Today, no objective observer can deny that individual freedom, not government control, is the strongest spark for economic development and human progress. President Lucinci, you have the confidence of your people and have our confidence as well. You also have our admiration. It's a pleasure to greet you on behalf of the people of the United States. Welcome. Señor Presidente, experimento una gran complacencia por encontrarme en la ciudad de Washington, en esta hermosa mañana luminosa, atendiendo la cordial invitación que usted, señor presidente Reagan, tuvo a bien formularme. Interpreto esta deferencia como una distinción a nuestro país y como un propósito de buena voluntad por parte del gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Represento a Venezuela pero sin duda y de algún modo represento también a la América Latina en la medida de la identificación de nuestros pueblos, de la comunidad de nuestros problemas y de la coincidencia de nuestras aspiraciones. Vengo por consiguiente, señor Reagan, a sostener con usted y con los altos funcionarios del gobierno de los Estados Unidos un diálogo franco, sincero, amistoso y también ponderado. 
represento a una de las democracias más sólidas de la América Latina y vengo de un país en donde el sistema democrático pluralista constituye una experiencia irreversible. Nuestra historia fue traumática y usted lo sabe. Soy el sexto presidente de un proceso que en el curso de los últimos 26 años le ha demostrado a los venezolanos que la democracia es un régimen que permite progresar en libertad. Nuestro sistema se afirma en el ejercicio libre y secreto del sufragio universal. La alternabilidad republicana en un país esencialmente democrático como Venezuela nos garantiza un futuro de avance. Creemos en la necesidad de reformas sociales y las acometemos en el marco del libre juego de las ideas. Esto forma parte de nuestra manera de ser y de entender nuestra responsabilidad política. Para los venezolanos no hay alternativa válida a la democracia. La experiencia nos lo ha dictado como una verdad indivisible. Somos un país pacífico y creemos, por tanto, en la solución pacífica de las controversias. Tenemos una historia de amistad y de solidaridad. No interferimos en los asuntos de otros y somos celosos de los nuestros. Hemos luchado y lucharemos por la equidad en las relaciones económicas internacionales. Creemos que el avance sin precedentes de la ciencia y de la tecnología le permite a toda la humanidad alcanzar niveles racionales de bienestar si los grandes estadistas contemporáneos asumen con buena voluntad su misión en un mundo cada vez más interdependiente. América Latina avanza hacia la democracia, señor presidente. Países del cono sur, con gran tradición intelectual e histórica, retoman el camino de la libertad y del orden democrático, del cual un día fueron pioneros. Es la hora de que estimulemos con franqueza, sin egoísmos y sin temores, ese proceso hacia la libertad y hacia el predominio de los valores fundamentales de la persona humana. Paralelamente a ese proceso en la América del Sur, a un costado de nuestros países, en la América Central, tiene lugar un conflicto cuya complejidad se hace cada vez más evidente por la suma de factores internacionales nuevos a los muy viejos problemas de la región dominada tradicionalmente por dictaduras inhumanas y por oligarquías insaciables. El conflicto de la América Central demanda de todos nosotros ponderación, equilibrio, firmeza para cooperar en la búsqueda de soluciones compatibles con la esencia y con la idiosincrasia de esos abatidos pueblos. Creemos firmemente que la solución de la crisis planteada reside en la efectiva democratización de la región y en la exclusión de factores externos, continentales o extracontinentales. No creemos en soluciones militares o de fuerza en la delicada y compleja crisis de los países centroamericanos, sino por el contrario, creemos que el único camino viable y la única solución duradera reside en el diseño y aplicación de una política de democratización, de pluralismo, de justicia social y de desarrollo económico de todos los países de la región, sin exclusiones y sin imposiciones. Como país del Grupo de Contadora, Venezuela ha hecho esfuerzos para la solución pacífica en América Central y a pesar de nuestros problemas propios, mantenemos un programa de cooperación energética con la región que traducen los hechos postulados de buena voluntad. Sin seros practicantes de la democracia, ninguno de nosotros, ni usted ni yo, señor presidente, podría sentirse realmente satisfecho hasta tanto desde el Ártico canadiense a la Tierra del Fuego, el sistema democrático de vivir sea práctica y convicción en todos nuestros países. Vengo finalmente, señor Presidente de los Estados Unidos, con la mente y el corazón abiertos, despojado de viejos prejuicios, persuadido de la solidez y de la justicia de nuestras ideas, a entablar con usted un diálogo que espero sea fecundo 
para la consolidación de las relaciones tradicionalmente amistosas entre Venezuela y los Estados Unidos. Le agradezco, señor presidente, en mi nombre y en el de mis acompañantes, sus cordiales palabras de bienvenida que auguran un positivo intercambio de ideas y de experiencias entre nosotros. Esas palabras suyas bien se corresponden con el espíritu de amistad y simpatía que a lo largo del tiempo ha caracterizado las relaciones entre los Estados Unidos y Venezuela. Nuestras dos naciones, señor Presidente Reagan, comparten los ideales comunes de Bolívar y de Washington y de los abanderados y forjadores en el mundo americano de los principios de libertad, de democracia, de independencia nacional y de respeto a la dignidad de la persona humana. Muchas gracias por su bienvenida, señor Presidente. Mr. President, it is a great pleasure for me to be here in this beautiful city of Washington responding to the kind invitation you have extended to me, Mr. President. I interpret this deference as a distinction marking my country and as an expression of goodwill of the government of the United States. I represent Venezuela, but also in some way I represent undoubtedly Latin America as a whole in view of the identification of our populations, the community of our interests, and the coincidence of our aspirations. I thus come, Mr. Reagan, to hold with you and the senior officials of the government of the United States a dialogue that is to be frank, sincere, amicable, and thoughtful as well. I represent one of the soundest democracies of Latin America. I come from a country where pluralistic democracy constitutes an irreversible experience. Our history has been traumatic, you know it well. I am the sixth president of a process that throughout the last 26 years has shown Venezuelans that democracy enables them to progress in freedom. Our system rests on the free and secret practice of the universal right to vote. The concept of alternativeness of republican governments in an intrinsically democratic country such as ours guarantees us a future of progress. We believe in the need for social reforms and embark on them in a frame of free expression of ideas. All this is inherent to our way of life and our way of understanding our political responsibility. For Venezuelans, there is no valid alternative to democracy. Experience has shown it to be an indivisible truth. We are a peaceful country and therefore believe in peaceful solutions to controversies. Our history has been one of friendship and solidarity. We do not interfere in the affairs of others and zealously watch over our own affairs. We have fought and shall continue to fight for the achievement of equity in international economic relations. We believe that the unprecedented advancement of science and technology enables all of mankind to reach rational levels of well-being if only the great statesmen of our times pursue in goodwill their mission in an ever more interdependent world. Latin America is moving forward on the road to democracy, Mr. President, Countries of the South Cone, with their great tradition of intellect and historical achievement, tread again the path of liberty and democratic order they themselves had once opened up and pioneered. Let us encourage them at this time, openly, unselfishly, and fearlessly, in their process to freedom and enforcement 
of the fundamental values of the human spirit. Simultaneously with this development in South America, contiguously to our countries in Central America, conflicts are raging and their complexity ever more apparent are due to the summation of international factors to the already long-standing problems of the region, traditionally ruled by inhuman dictatorships and insatiable oligarchies. The conflict of Central America demands of all of us ponderation, equilibrium, and firmness if we are to cooperate in seeking solutions compatible with the essence and idiosyncrasy of those depressed nations. We firmly believe that the solution to the existing crisis rests on an effective democratization of the region and the exclusion of external factors, be they continental or extracontinental. We do not believe that the solution to this delicate and complex crisis of the Central American countries can be one of force or military involvement. Rather, to the contrary, we believe that the only viable path and the only lasting solution rests on designing and implementing a policy of democratization, pluralism, social justice, and economic of all our countries. Finally, I come, Mr. President of the United States, with an open mind and an open heart, free from all prejudices, and convinced of the soundness and fairness of our views, to engage with you in a dialogue, fruitful, I hope, for the consolidation of the relations traditionally friendly between Venezuela and the United States. I thank you, Mr. President, in my own name and on behalf of those who accompany me for your kind words of welcome, which lead us to expect a positive exchange of ideas and mutual experiences. Your words correspond to the spirit of friendship and sympathy, which through the passing of time has been characteristic of the relations between the United States and Venezuela. Both nations, Mr. President, share the common ideas of Bolivar and Washington and those of the standard bearers and shapers in the world of the Americas of the principles of liberty, democracy, national independence, and respect for the dignity of man. Thank you very much for your welcome. <laughs>